In fact, uh, uh, first up on the phone lines this morning, we've got uh, former state senator Ryan Zinke, of course, now a candidate for the U.S. House. In fact, I had a, he, he's already released a statement on this budget agreement. I was going to share it with you, but he's on the phone line. So let's let's get to his call on line three, likely listening to us via KJJR. Uh, where are you at this morning, Ryan? I'm in beautiful Missoula on my way to hell this morning. Good morning. All right. Good morning. Good to, good to hear from you. It's a little hard to hear you, so, but I, I think we got you coming a, across Lima, Charlie, there. Well, uh, rather than me read this statement that you've got on this budget agreement, what, what's your reaction to the news out of Washington, D.C. with this latest uh, budget agreement? Well, I, I think it shows that we can't, we can't uh, control our budget. I mean, when, when you have a $23 billion savings on a three point Six trillion dollar budget. I mean, you're not slowing down, you know, the budget at all. And and so I, I look at it, and it's clear to me that Washington cannot rein in the spending. And so the only way out of our problem, if we can't if we can't cut our way out and we can't tax our way out, because I think taxes are too high as they sit right now, I think the only alternative is we're going to have to grow our way out with and create jobs and grow the economy. And Aaron, the only way to do that is to get business, you know, moving by getting the government out of business. And that, that, that to me is a fairly simple, straightforward formula. Well, I know uh, typically when, when we get phone calls, I kind of throw it out there. Hey, hey, I say, hey, what's on your mind? So I kind of threw, threw that question out there uh, to you right off the bat. But was there something else you wanted to call in about this morning? Well, no, I, th- I think, you know, we should all look at what happened in D.C. and you know, the, the budget's in importance. There, there's some positive on it. Uh, some positive they had an agreement, although I think the agreement falls short of the objective. But at least we had an agreement. I mean, so something is moving in Washington. And I'll, and I'll give, you know, Ryan a, a kudos on that one. But I just don't think that the cuts, you really can't take them seriously because the cuts really aren't deep enough to matter. And not now when you're talking a seventeen trillion dollar budget. Well in fact so that... you go you go back to the other side of it is is that and I'd spent the last uh, month and a half on the road talking to the oil guys and the bankers and the industry guys and the small equipment manufacturers and the consensus across the board is we need to unleash American industry by getting the government out of business. Well, in fact, uh, I mean, on that front, another story I was going to share with folks today, this is out of the Say Anything blog uh, out of Minot, North Dakota. Oil tax revenues are producing $40 million per month just for one North Dakota tribe or for the the, the three affiliated tribes. are $40 million per month. I mean, imagine what a tribe in Montana could do with that money, or what, or what communities and businesses could do with that cash as well. But looking at the numbers on this this budget, of course, uh, Congressman Paul Ryan is apparently making his pitch to uh, to House Republicans today. But it's a plan that would hike spending by 85 billion dollars over the next two years, according to FoxNews.com. Uh, the budget pact would partially lift caps imposed as part of the 2011 debt ceiling uh, deal. I, so I get the take. If you were there, you, you'd uh, you'd vote against this plan. Well, I, I just don't think it's a, a serious attempt to rein in spending. At the at the end of the day, you know, our nation faces some significant challenges, and you gotta you gotta show grit. You gotta show that you're there, you know, to serve the people. And people are upset at the spending, so let's look at it hard. I mean, some tough decisions have got to be made. You got to show a little more leadership, a little less politics, um, and 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 face the problems that really matter. Again, I don't think you can cut your way out of $17 trillion. I think we can do a good job of, of streamlining where we can and, and reducing it. But I think the only way out of our problems is we're going to have to create jobs and uh, go forward. You know, and uh, that, go, that going forward has got to be getting the government out of business. And I'm a huge advocate of energy independence, and it has to be fossil fuels, guys. I mean, it's... To, to think you're going to get out, you know, of energy independence on on wind power or solar uh, is tantamount to pixie dust and, and hope. Kind of, so kind of, fossil fuel, like it or not, are going to be a big, big part of the economy and 
Kind of, kind of like the pink ponies that people are promising to everybody. Yeah, we're $17 trillion in debt, but let's just give you all these false promises that we can give you everything you want. It certainly infects energy policy as well. Well, Ryan Zinke, former state senator, of course, a former SEAL Team uh, 6, uh, commander at SEAL Team 6. Thanks for calling in this morning. Of course, the phone lines are hey, open, to, open to everybody, well, uh, even you, candidates Ryan. for office. You, yeah. Well, visit us on our website, www.ryanzinke.com. I look forward to talking to you soon. I'll be in Billings on Thursday and Friday. All right. Sounds good. Well, good to hear from you. Let's see. We also got Henry in Bozeman online, too, listening to Kate.